Christ is risen. Let, let me try that again. Let's do that one more time. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. And it is the uh, third Sunday of Easter Tide. Maybe, if, yeah, it is the third Sunday of Easter Tide. And welcome to Pilgrim Church. We are so glad that you are here this morning. Good morning, Pilgrim Church. Pilgrims on this journey, you are welcome here. You are loved. You are beloved. In the fullness of who you are, we are glad that you are here with us this day. In the Zoom or in the room or on YouTube, folks who speak differently, vote differently, look different. Singles, couples, and families, new or long time, sad or joyful, doubtful or convinced, you are welcome here. People of every race, nationality, religious background, educational background, ethnicity, age, gender identity, sexual orientation, marital status, economic status, and physical and mental and emotional ability, you are welcome and beloved here. We have just a couple of announcements before we get started with our worship service. Uh, and I believe they both come from this half of the sanctuary. Sarah, do you wanna tell us about Crafternoon? Sure, we have Crafternoon coming up. Um, we're going to do some watercolor painting or if you want to bring your own craft, knitting or painting or whatever, um, bring it too. And we have fun conversation and some good snacks. And that's Friday afternoon at three o'clock. Yes. All right. And I'd like to invite Susan Moffat to come forward for an announcement about uh, something very special coming up. Good morning, Pilgrim friends. Good morning. You know, one of the things I love about this church are, is all the ways that we celebrate and honor our children and youth. And one of the ways we do that is to honor important milestones like high school graduation. Um, and for the, the past several years, our tradition has been to give high school graduates a journal to take with them. Um, and in the journal are some pages in which they can like, you know, fill out their journey or write lists or, you know, write notes back to mom. But in interspersed in the journal, we also like to include pages from our Pilgrim family to share with our, our high school graduates um, heading off to college. So as they're writing their journey, um, they can re remember how loved they are here at Pilgrim. And we have one high school graduate this year, Sydney Stevens. Um, and so here is where all of you come in. So back on the narthex, you will see blank pages for Sydney's journal. We invite you to take those home with you today. For those of you on Zoom, you can put in the chat if you would like Sarah to send you um, some blank pages. And then we would like you to to decorate those pages in any way that you would like, with a favorite quote, with a story, with a picture. And then, then here's the important part. Um, two important parts, please put your name on the pages so Sydney will know who these pages are from. And the second important piece of information, please bring them back by May 5th and give the pages to Sarah so she can reinsert them in the journal to give to Sydney on May 12th. Sorry, Sydney, no surprise. Um, but we're so proud of you and we would love for you to carry a little piece of us with you on your journey. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Susan. Um, I do have one other quick announcement, which is an official call to meeting for a congregational meeting on April 28th to elect our officers and install our new church council. This is gonna take about four minutes and will happen in the worship service, but in order to make sure that we are officially in line with our bylaws, you have now heard the official call to meeting. It is on the pink sheet in the bulletin. And with all of that, we will now begin worship with our peace. Leslie. Peace be with you. 
Let us share the peace of Christ with one another. join me in the call to worship. This is the house of God. Praise. We thank you that you have answered us and have become our salvation. Stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is God's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Please join in the opening hymn, Joy Dawned Again on Easter Day, number 241 in the Black Hymnal. Please join in the opening prayer. Come, O Creator, O immensity of love, O eternity of mercy. Come and be with us and beside us and over us. Be as hands upon us and fashion us for shining. Be as warmth within us and fire us for caring. Be as strength beside us and shape our lives for healing. Abide in our prayers, the spoken and unspoken, 
and make your word come true in our flesh. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen. The scripture reading this morning is from the book of Acts, chapter 3. One day, Peter and John were going up to the temple at the hour of prayer, at three o'clock in the afternoon. And a man, lame from birth, was being carried in. People would lay him daily at the gate of the temple called the Beautiful Gate so that he could ask for alms from those entering the temple. When he saw Peter and John about to go into the temple, he asked them for alms. Peter looked intently at him, as did John, and said, Look at us. And he fixed his attention on them, expecting to receive something from them. Peter said, I have no silver or gold, but what I have I give you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Stand up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and raised him up, and immediately his feet and ankles were made strong. Jumping up, he stood and began to walk, and he entered the temple with them, walking and leaping and praising God. All the people saw him walking and praising God, and they recognized him as the one who used to sit and ask for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and astonishment at what had happened to him. Here ends the reading. Hear what the Spirit of God is saying to the church. Now that youth and children can come downstairs, um, youth sixth grade and up, if you want to come downstairs today, we're making bulletin art for children Sunday, or you're welcome to stay up here for the sermon too. And thank you, choir. That was lovely. We do this wonderful thing called Pick Up Choir, and if you're on our email list, you know which weeks you can just come at 9.45 and sing something beautiful like that. 
Would you pray with me? Oh God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts together be always acceptable in your sight, for you are our strength and our redeemer. Amen. So as Leslie read, in our text this morning, Peter and John look intently at this man at the beautiful gate. They look straight at him. They fasten their gaze upon him. And they not only look at him, they ask him to look at them. In other words, they make eye contact with him. They spend time with him. They see an actual human being in front of them. We can speculate about why the man is at the gate every day and never inside the temple. It may be that he has never asked to enter. Or it may be that with his disability, the steps at the gate seem impossible to climb. It may be that his people never imagined that he would want to go inside and participate in the prayers and worship, that they make an assumption based on his disability. There is one verse in the Hebrew Bible in Leviticus that says that people with disabilities could not enter the temple. But we have learned not to take one verse and extrapolate a judgment on all ancient Jewish practices and attitudes. In any case, whatever the reason is, this man was carried to the beautiful gate every day to sit in that place begging for money. When you drive down Route 2 to Alewife, there are people on the center islands every day begging for money. When you exit the Mass Pike in Cambridge, there are people on the side of the road every day begging for money. Yesterday, John and I happened to turn from Lexington Street onto Trapello Road and there was someone on the center island asking for money. And if you pass them every day, you probably don't make eye contact, and you probably don't know their name. Peter and John made eye contact with this man. Sometimes the Bible frustrates me. We hear a story about someone being offered dignity and respect, being truly seen, being restored to some aspect of life that they had previously lost, and the Bible doesn't give us their name. A few weeks ago, we heard Mark's story of the woman who anointed Jesus and Jesus' statement that she would be remembered, but Mark did not record her name. In our text this morning, a man who was ignored by passerby, except for the millisecond when they tossed coins into his bucket, is restored to fullness of life. This man is seen by Peter and John but we are not told his name. I wish that the text would make it plain that Peter and John encountered a man with a disability, someone on the margins of his community, and they chose to stop in their tracks, make eye contact with him, and treat him as a person of inherent worth and dignity, equal in worth to every other person that Peter and John see in this man the imago dei, the image of God, because as followers of Jesus, they had learned to look for the imago dei in every person they encountered. 
That's the norm their beloved teacher taught them. The norm that we find in Matthew 25 and in loads of other passages in the Hebrew Bible and the Christian Testament. But it would be nice if the Bible gave us his name. Peter says to this man whose name we do not know, who seems to only expect a few coins, Peter says, I have no money. I have no silver or gold, but what I have, I give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, stand up and walk. I have no silver or gold, but what I have, I give you. Peter and John, as leaders in the early church, share goods in common with their community. We see this in the previous chapter of Acts. And they were followers of an itinerant carpenter, so they were never going to have a lot of money in the first place. But what they have the name of Jesus Christ, the power of the Holy Spirit, their commitment to loving their neighbors, their commitment to the dignity of all people. This is what they give to this man. We can read this healing story literally, that in an instant, this man's inability to stand or walk is cured, and he is physically different. But that reading may not be the most helpful to us today. So can we complexify that a little bit? I want to tell you about Amos Young, who is the author of The Bible, Disability, and the Church, who names the complexity. He says that disability is to be understood not only in biological or medical terms, but also in social terms. In other words, people with disabilities are not only individuals who have physical or mental or intellectual challenges. They are people who confront challenges made worse by the attendant social stigmas which subjugate them. And so, people with disabilities, he writes, not only suffer physically, but also are afflicted by the social prejudices that they have had to deal with every day. Now, without quoting Amos Young's entire book, which I do recommend to you, and I think you should read, let me jump to Young's interpretation of this Bible passage, this healing story, in his reflection The healing of the man at the beautiful gate is more about restoring him to full inclusion in the community and a full opportunity to worship God. And Young makes one final point that I want to share with you, and it's complicated, so stick with me. He says, the redemption of disability doesn't necessarily consist of the healing of disabilities but involves the removal of those barriers, social, structural, economic, political, religious, theological, which hinder, which hinder those people with temporarily abled bodies from welcoming and being hospitable to people with disabilities. Did you catch that? What he's saying is that part of this healing story is the removal of barriers that keep temporarily abled people from welcoming people with disabilities. So this is as much about the healing of a system as it is the curing of an individual person. And he says, I refute the normate notion that only non-disabled bodies are sufficiently holy and pure to accomplish the work of God. I wish we knew the name of the man sitting at the beautiful gate, but we don't. And I wish that we could hear his voice. But at least we can glimpse his perspective. We glimpse his choices and priorities in the moments after Peter and John lift him up. 
The text says that jumping up, he stood and began to walk, and he entered the temple with them, walking and leaping and praising God. The first thing he does is he jumps up and goes right into the temple, leaping and praising God. He goes into the temple for prayer and praise. He may not have silver or gold either, but what he has, he offers to God. There's something else I want us to catch in our text this morning. In the moment of healing, Peter and John, who have already made eye contact with this man, reach out to him and take him, the text says, they take him by the right hand. This is one of those phrases that some of us would miss. But if you have been in the congregational church in New England for a long time, you might have, in one form or another, been offered the right hand of fellowship. Has anyone here ever been offered the right hand of fellowship? I'm seeing a nod in the back. Yes, okay. The, the right hand of fellowship is a very interesting thing. This is one of the ways that we have historically welcomed people into local church membership, and we can trace it all the way back to John and Peter and James welcoming Paul and Barnabas with the right hand of fellowship when Paul entered the church. Is it possible that a major part of this moment of healing is not a cure at all? that it is offering this man the right hand of fellowship, offering this man an invitation into full fellowship and participation in the life of the community. When the man, leaping joyfully and praising God, enters the temple, people recognize him. They recognize the one that they had passed by, Day after day after day, they recognized the one who had sat at the gate asking for money. They recognize him, and they are filled with wonder and astonishment at what had happened to him. Peter and John reached out to him with the right hand of fellowship and offered both healing and welcome if his legs worked differently, that was no more wondrous than he had been welcomed. In the words of the World Council of Churches talking about theology and disability, healing refers to wounds that are incurred by the violence of excluding people by sending them away. Healing is needed when members have been cut off from the body of Christ. To be healed is to be restored in a relationship of communion with God and with one another. I wish we knew this man's name. I wish we had heard his interpretation of this moment. But then again, Perhaps because we do not know his name, perhaps we are being invited to imagine ourselves in his place. Whatever has held us outside the gate of God's house, physical or intellectual ability, age or gender identity, sexual orientation, trauma, worry, whatever, May we hear in this man's story a messenger of God reaching out to our right hand. We know what this man did in response. He leaped and jumped and ran into the temple and worshiped God. May each one of us be so touched by God's love and the welcome of the church that we are able to do the same. Amen. Our next hymn 
is a beloved one of Easter. In the bulb there is a flower. It is number 433 in the Black Hymnal. This is the time when we gather the joys and concerns of our community together into a prayer that we lift up to God. We start with joys because we have been taught in our tradition that in every moment we are able to and should give thanks even when things are hard. And we include the folks who are on Zoom in this gathering of prayers, as well as the folks here. So Zoom folks, I invite you to be adding your prayers of joy into the chat right now. What are we glad for this day? What do we give thanks for? I just wanted to let everyone know that I committed to Dean College. All right. Excellent. Dean College, here comes Sydney. Watch out. Okay. Are there other pieces of good news? Yeah. Um, this is asking for prayers um, for discernment. Um, Right now, uh, I'm a board member with a group called uh, the Community Endowment of Lexington, and we are now in our grant review cycle. Um, we have received an amazing amount of grants, um, and it's a, it's a very intense process, but a really um, purposeful one, and it actually intersects with things that you were talking about earlier, because many of the grants that we will be discerning have to do with folks who have um, who have challenges, so um, it's so we want to pray for that huge team. That's that's we're going to be working really hard over the next month. Um, so, to give people money. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you to the donors and everyone who's making that grant process possible for CEL. For the beauty of nature that we can see through the window, and even in my garden a little bit. <laughs> Yeah, I, I have to say that um, John knows as we were driving around yesterday, I kept going, Forsythia, Forsythia. 
It's a beautiful, beautiful spring. Beautiful spring this year. Yeah. Are there other Thanksgivings? Okay. Yeah. Um, my aunt and uncle are having a baby. All right. You're going to be an aunt or a cousin. Cousin. Okay. Right. Okay. Cool. I get this mixed up because in my family, our, our, our lines are... So anyway, yay! Good. I just wanted to mention um, my family is gathering all next week to celebrate my dad's 90th birthday. And one other thing I wanted to mention, I was in Burlington, Vermont on Monday for the eclipse. So I saw totality, which I was absolutely blown away by. It looked heavenly. That's all I can, can compare it to. It was amazing. Thank you. Yeah, for the amazing moments that we're able to experience, including the eclipse. And for your dad's 90th, what is his first name? I'm going to come over to the Zoom in a second here. Okay. And now, Zoom folks, we can see your beautiful names and faces here in the sanctuary, too. We got an amen on the anthem from the Zoom, and we are indeed thankful for our music. What's hard? What are we worried about? And who needs our prayers this day? I'm going to lift up a prayer for Ronnie and Ron as they discern the best next steps for Ronnie. Folks on Zoom, I'm going to come back over to you after one from here. Probably both a joy and a concern, but uh, prayers for all the people running tomorrow in the marathon. For those running the marathon, um, may their steps be light, and when they're not, may they remember the prayer uh, of the, the little boy, oh God, you pick him up and I'll put him down. And there are so many places and communities in our world that need our prayers. So we know that we are praying for so many places, even those not named yet this morning. Let us bring it all to God. And let us begin our prayer by breathing in, breathing deeply, feeling God's love entering us in every breath that we take. And as we breathe out, Let us bring courage and love into this world. God of resurrection, hear our prayers this morning. 
Hear our prayers on this glorious day. Hear our prayers as we see blue skies, trees budding, flowers in bloom. Hear our praise and our thanks. May we leap up with praise for you, O oh God, and for this beautiful world. Hear our prayers, O oh God. Hear our thanksgivings for every way in which our bodies, minds, and spirits are able to offer you praise. We may not have words. We may not have degrees. We may not be able to run a marathon, but we are able, we are able to give you praise. And for those who are running the marathon, may every step they take be strong and safe and be an offering of praise to you. We give you thanks for the littlest babies, for a cousin coming into Giovanna's family, and for our relatives of all ages, including Doug turning 90. We give you thanks for next steps, for exciting new journeys, and we pray for Sydney at Dean College. And we give you thanks for generosity so that when people are in need, Groups like CEL can step up. We pray for wisdom for everyone who is making those decisions. God of resurrection, hear our prayer. Hear our prayer for this planet, so beautiful, so precious, so fragile. Guide us, God, to address climate change for the sake of your creation and for the sake of every one of our siblings around the world. And God, we lift up in prayer this day every person in a war zone every person displaced by war or violence, every person who faces hunger, every person who wonders what will become of them, of their family, of their neighborhood, of their community. We pray for the people of Gaza We pray for the people of Israel, especially those who have family that they still don't know where they are. We pray for the peacemakers and the diplomats and everyone who is working toward a ceasefire. We pray for those who are still in a war zone in Ukraine and for the people of Sudan and the people of Haiti. We may not be able to look directly into their eyes, O oh God, but we pray that you would make each one of these people known to us as your beloved child. God of resurrection, we pray for peace even when we do not understand, even when we are near to despair for the state of the world. We pray for peace 
in the name of your Son, the Prince of Peace, who has taught us how to be peacemakers and how to love our neighbors. God of resurrection, for brief moments of astonishment like the eclipse, we give you thanks. And for all of the moments of hope in this time, we give you thanks. And in the name of your Son, our risen Savior, and our teacher, we pray. And now we pray in the words that he taught us, saying together, our Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. It is the generosity of this community that makes it possible for us to reach out to our neighbors and to offer love, respect, dignity, and compassion. And so the morning offering will now be very gratefully received. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Let the house of Israel say, his mercy endures forever. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. The Lord's right hand has struck with power. The Lord's right hand is exalted. I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord that this has been done, it is wonderful in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Let us rejoice and be glad. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God of creatures here below. Praise God above ye heavenly host. Creator Christ and Holy Ghost. Amen. Let us pray. Bless these gifts, O God and through them bless our neighbors. Through these gifts make your love known in our world. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 257 in the Black Hymnal, but let me note that we are going to sing verses 1 and 4. Verses 1 and 4.
please join us for a cup of coffee after the worship service in Pilgrim Hall. And now hear this benediction. Now may the spirit that was in Jesus be in us also, enabling us to know the truth, to do the will of God, and to abide always in God's peace. Amen.